Vladimir Putin's reign as the supreme clown of the Russian Federation is coming to an end, and his own creation, Yevgeny Prigozhin, is to blame. Prigozhin's Wagner Group went on a short-lived fun run to Moscow, claiming that the Russian Ministry of Defense had shelled their tank and killed many of their members. This allegation, stemming from ongoing sabotage between the Russian army and Wagner forces, sparked Prigozhin's ire and led to Russia being reverse invaded during its invasion of Ukraine. As more information emerges, it becomes clear that Prigozhin came close to shaking things up in Russia, almost prompting the early retirement of Russian Minister of Defense Sergei Shoigu and Chief of the General Staff Valery Gerasimov. Prigozhin publicly directed his anger towards these two figures, criticizing their general ineptitude and accusing them of causing the deaths of numerous Russian troops. Shoigu managed to escape before Wagner reached him, but Gerasimov sought refuge in a safe house. Russia dispatched forces to intercept Wagner, but these forces refused to engage, resulting in sporadic fighting on the ground. The Russian Air Force targeted Wagner's air defense missiles, destroying six missiles at the cost of a dozen pilots. Prigozhin's target was indeed Gerasimov and Shoigu, but the plot was leaked, allowing them to escape. In response, Prigozhin redirected Wagner towards Moscow, threatening destruction to anyone who stood in their way. Russia scrambled to find forces to stop Wagner but realized their limited capacity to confront 25,000 mercenaries with T-54 tanks. Putin made his escape from Moscow before facing a fate similar to Mussolini. However, Prigozhin abruptly halted his march towards Moscow, announcing the return of Wagner to their field camps, located around 200 kilometers away. In a surprising turn, Putin pardoned Prigozhin and Wagner, allowing Prigozhin to exile himself to Belarus. The reasons behind Prigozhin's sudden change of plans remain unknown, but the incident shattered Putin's cultivated image of an untouchable strongman in control of Russia. For a dictator reliant on intimidation, bribes, oppression, and occasional murders, appearing weak is a grave vulnerability. Prigozhin not only made Putin look weak, but also incompetent. A strong man doesn't threaten traitors only to forgive them hours later on national television. A strong man doesn't let the leader of an attempted coup simply leave the country. Prigozhin's defiance and the favorable treatment he received from Putin have tarnished the Russian dictator's image, attracting sharks sensing blood in the water. Wagner troops received a pardon with three options, join Prigozhin in Belarus, sign contracts with the Russian military, or return home. Russia swiftly disarmed Wagner, confiscating their heavy equipment, including tanks, artillery, aircraft, and infantry fighting vehicles. In Syria, Wagner officers were reportedly arrested by the Russian army to sever their control over the group. Russia aims to dismantle Wagner completely, a challenging task considering their operations and finances are based in Africa, beyond the reach of the Russian government, which initially sent them there to act on its behalf. Putin created this monster with his own two hands. He allowed Yevgeny Prigozhin to establish Wagner PMC, a technically illegal private military company in Russia. Despite their illegality, PMCs gave Putin leverage over their owners, such as Prigozhin, to prevent them from rising against him. However, Wagner became better equipped than most Russian units, with tanks, artillery, and helicopters, thanks to the Russian government's blessing. Putin believed he had control over Wagner, but when the Russian military weakened during the Ukraine conflict, Prigozhin had Putin under his thumb. The question arises as to why Prigozhin didn't go through with his plans. Perhaps he lacked political support, but after the rebellion, support for Wagner and Prigozhin emerged among the Russian people. This rattled Putin, who resorted to releasing propaganda videos of himself meeting supporters. The fate of those around Putin became a topic of speculation. Defense Minister Sergei Shoigu has not been seen publicly since the insurrection, and rumors suggest he may have been dismissed and replaced. Similarly, General Gerasimov has been absent from public view, leading to rumors of a purge among senior leaders. As Putin weighs his options regarding those responsible for the rebellion, he must consider the potential repercussions and the enemies he may create.
The Russian people, discontented with worsening economic conditions and the toll of the war, are not wholly opposed to the idea of violent revolution. There are unconfirmed reports of General Sergei Surovikin's arrest, a figure known for his crimes in Syria and failed campaigns in Ukraine. Surovikin may have had knowledge of Prigozhin's plot, but it remains unclear if he was complicit or simply opportunistic. The oligarchs, who hold significant power in Russia, are also growing exasperated with Putin's war and regime. Leaked conversations between businessmen and politicians reveal their dissatisfaction with Putin's disastrous war efforts and his lack of ethics. The comments indicate that they are not the only ones who have grown tired of Putin's leadership. Wagner's actions have demonstrated that it would not take much to remove Putin from power, further adding to his concerns. The rot within the system runs deep, and Putin is increasingly seeing shadows in every corner. The delicate balance of hating and fearing each other, more than they hate and fear him, which a dictator must maintain, is becoming more precarious. The Russian people, senior military leaders, and oligarchs pose potential challenges to Putin's rule, and the recent events involving Wagner have shown that ousting the dictator from power is not an insurmountable task. Shoigu and Gerasimov continue to hold significant influence within the armed forces, making it risky for Putin to remove either of them as it could lead to another coup, potentially orchestrated by the military itself. Putin is faced with the challenge of determining how to handle Prigozhin's grievances, as Prigozhin blames them for initiating the war and deliberately misleading both the president and the Russian people. This presents a new concern for Putin, as Prigozhin went against the Kremlin's narrative on the war in Ukraine, and his message resonated with the public. During his takeover of Rostov-on-Don, Prigozhin exposed the lies propagated by Russia about the war in Ukraine. He refuted claims such as NATO collaborating with Ukraine to attack Russia, the existence of Nazis in Ukraine, and the threat of extermination to Russian speakers in Ukraine. One by one, Prigozhin dismantled the Kremlin's favored lies, which had been accepted by many in Russia and even some in the West who unquestioningly believed Putin's propaganda. Despite the government's efforts to restrict the flow of information, Prigozhin's statements spread through social media, despite being prohibited from state media coverage. Prigozhin's act of defiance not only challenged the Kremlin's narrative, but also encouraged opposition to it, further complicating Putin's precarious position in Russian politics. Putin finds himself desperately trying to retain control as time slips through his fingers. For the first time in his reign, he faces the genuine prospect of losing the upcoming election. Although elections in Russia are often regarded as mere formalities, the potential for unrest looms if millions of disgruntled Russians, aware they did not vote for Putin, witness his uncontested victory. Internationally, the Wagner Rebellion has turned Putin into a subject of ridicule. Most significantly, the Russian military proved powerless to quell the actions of a private military company operating within its own borders. As a consequence of the Wagner coup, support for Ukraine has surged among Westerners. The fears of escalation that Putin has cultivated over the past year have greatly diminished. People are finally recognizing what some have been trying to convey for a year. The Russian military lacks credibility and poses no real threat of escalation. Consequently, the U.S. Congress has urged President Biden to increase aid to Ukraine significantly, including the provision of cluster munitions to assist in trench clearing. Putin finds himself floundering, desperately attempting to address the numerous challenges posed by Prigozhin's actions. The ultimate fate of Prigozhin remains uncertain, but given the lengths to which the Putin regime has gone to eliminate critics globally, Prigozhin's life may be in serious danger. However, Prigozhin leads one of the world's most powerful private military companies, Wagner PMC, which generates billions in revenue from various operations worldwide, including significant involvement in precious mineral mines across the developing world. Therefore, Wagner PMC no longer relies on the Kremlin, and if necessary, has already demonstrated its capability to act independently. The fate of Putin himself remains uncertain, but he has a track record of surviving challenging situations. 
However, it is evident that the Russian Federation is currently at its weakest point in modern history, primarily due to the actions of the man who has transformed into an international laughingstock overnight. The duration of Putin's grip on power remains to be seen. 